Yo, 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 what's going on everyone? Skilled Fawn here. Hope everyone's having a great day. Today I will be reviewing the single player game, Star Wars Bounty Hunter, which came out in late 2002. Recently I acquired a PS5, and I've been having a lot of fun playing the games on the PS5. I saw a bunch of Star Wars games that I've played, and others I have not. I saw this and immediately downloaded it to play. I have watched Star Wars since I was a kid have played many games, especially Star Wars games. These include the Force Unleashed games, the Battlefronts, and many more. My favorite Star Wars movies are the prequels, as I grew up with them. Anakin, as cringy as his dialogue may be at times. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. Liar! This is where the fun begins is one of my favorite characters alongside Boba Fett. I also love the original trilogy as well. Seeing those movies as a kid amazed me. And to this day, I still love Star Wars. I love Star Wars and I would say I know a decent amount about it. So the critic scores gave the game uh, between five and seven out of 10, uh, but game critic scores are not all that accurate to how good a game actually is. The gameplay, for the most part, is really fun and well put together. The game usually has four to five missions per chapter, with a cutscene or two in between the missions. Each mission will equip you with different equipment, but as you get further into the game, you get better starting gear. Each mission, the player has five lives before at the end of their last life, the mission will have to be restarted. Django has many unique equipment pieces that are fun to use and add to the gameplay experience. He has his well-known blasters, jetpack, and rockets, while also utilizing a flamethrower, poison darts, cable to tie people up, grenades, and more. Lastly, the coolest thing was the rockets that split into three after firing. That was pretty cool stuff. Each mission has a main objective that the player is going for, but also side objectives where bounty targets can be found for money. When bounties are collected, it increases your notoriety ranking and unlocks extras in the menu. Anyone from a droid to a Twi'lek dancer can be a target. Yes, the camera movement of the game is pretty rough, I'm not gonna lie. But I get it, it is an old game from the PS2, so I'm not gonna take that many points away from it. I really enjoyed flying around with Django's jetpack and rocketing people below. The AI are decently smart and hit hard. The trouble I had was with this one mission where there are a bunch of Tusken Raiders that act like sniper jackals in Halo 2. So many deaths on that mission. <laughs> Later in the game, Zam will accompany you on missions and help you out. For the most part, I often knew where I was going, but there were a few zones where it took some time to find where to go. There wouldn't usually be an indicator besides maybe a tiny green button on a keypad or enemies tracking slash shooting me through walls. Needless to say, at some points I got very lost and it was very funny. Star Wars Bounty Hunter has many characters that will be briefly touching upon before talking about the story. The characters in this game, outside of the already displayed characters such as Django, Zam Dooku, etc. are well crafted. Django Fett, a ruthless, hardened, and veteran bounty hunter. He has now been tasked with taking in Kamari Bosa. Zam, a rookie bounty hunter initially set on taking in Faust, got caught up with Django. He eventually took her in under his wing. Darth Tyrannus, aka Count Dooku, my boy, instructed by Darth Sidious to kill his former apprentice, Bosa. He places a bounty on her for 5 million Republic credits and makes a competition to see the best bounty hunter able to capture her. We got Roz, Django's asset and good friend. Roz often helps Django with his missions and gives him personal advice. Kamori Bosa, Count Dooku's former apprentice and leader of the band of Gora. She is a ruthless Sith. Montross, a Mandalorian bounty hunter also tasked with bringing in Bosa. Montross and Django had beef from before. Jabba the Hutt, 
Crime Lord gives Jaco information in exchange for killing Gardula the Hutt. And then Gardula the Hutt, gambler and crime lord, has a giga chat of a crate dragon too. And the various bounty targets, Nico, Foss, etc. Your average mud licking and gunslinging bad guys. Star Wars Bounty Hunter takes place after Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, and 10 years before Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. The game starts off with Darth Sidious instructing Count Dooku to kill his former Padawan, Kamori Vosa, who has now become a leader of the Bandagora crime organization, and has become a considerable threat to Dooku and his master. Count Dooku's mistake must be dealt with. As this is happening, Jango Fett is on the Outland Station, where he is tasked with collecting the bounty of Miko. Miko and his fellow associates are rigging in an animal fight by using a neural implant in one of the Borhek creatures. The Borhek knocks Django's jetpack off when he flies down into the arena after one of Miko's associates. Django is now tasked with fighting this creature in the arena without a jetpack. And that first sequence was pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. Afterwards, he finds Miko stealing a speeder next to his shop where he persuades the owner to handing over the jetpack which he uses to find Miko. Django collects Miko's bounty and returns to his Toydarian friend Roz. Roz gives Django a communication device, which shows and explains Count Dooku placing a $5 million bounty on Vosa. Django heads off to Coruscant to investigate a connection between the Bandagora and a drug trafficking ring that is transporting death sticks. While on Coruscant, Django locates and captures Jarvis Gloom, a death sticks dealer who, after some quick interrogation, points him in the direction of Groff Hogg. While he was locating Hogg, he comes across his longtime rival Montross. Montross has already interrogated Hogg and frozen him with carbonite. After a short battle, with neither side winning, they both leave. Django investigates another lead on Coruscant and plans to find a senator who has information on the Bandogora. After a brief battle between Coruscant police slash security forces, Senator Conus Trell tells Django to go to Malasir to find Sebolto. Police tell Django to let him go, and he certainly does that. Afterwards, Django learns that Sebolto has placed a bounty on one of his former associates named Bandix Fuss, and Django goes believing that capturing him will allow him an audience with Sebolto. Django enters the prison only to find Zam Wessel, a rookie bounty hunter, already with Faust interrogating him. Zam and Django are compelled to work together to break out of OVO 4, or I don't even know, OVO 4, after their position is compromised. As they are about to leave, Django's ship gets destroyed and then they plan to take a ship from the hangar. Django acquires his ship, Slave One, from the hangar and leaves with Zam and Faust. Montross hears of the disturbance and follows Django and Zam. Django and Zam go to Malasir where they hand over Faust. Sepulto realizes Django's motive and tries to escape, but falls down a long tube into his Death Six factory, which is a funny cutscene. Uh, the Death Six factory is guarded by many of Sepulto's troops but also members of the Bandogora. Markers of the huts are observed, and Django plans to go to Tatooine before he gets ambushed and taunted by Montross. After another close encounter, with neither side letting up, Django dips with Zam's help. The two travel to Tatooine. Django visits Jabba the Hutt on Tatooine, while Zam goes to Gardula the Hutt. Their goals are to question their involvement with the Bandogora and Kamari Vosa. Jabba tells Django of Gardula's involvement and says he would be pleased if you would kill her for him. Fett goes to her hideout to find Zam trapped in a prison cell. Later, they would argue only for the guards to knock out Django, which is kind of a funny little sequence. With his weapons and equipment stripped from him, he has to find his way around to get it back. Subsequently, he interrogates Gardula, then feeds her to her crate dragon. After a short boss battle with the crate dragon, Django goes to Zam only to leave her in her cell. Django then gets a message showing Montross has attacked Roz at the station. 
Roz leaves Django with a guidance device. Um, and at this moment, there's like a cutscene and stuff, and it was actually pretty sad uh, seeing her go because pretty much most of the game, it's like her talking to Django and helping you out. So it was a bit of a sad moment, but uh, next, Django ventures to Colma, the base of the band Ogora. At the front of the base, Montross waits and taunts Django. After defeating Montross, who begged Django for warrior's death, Fett entered the base. He was greeted with a lovely Vosa who captured and tortured him. Zam comes to the rescue and saves Django from demise. Unfortunately, she was shot and injured by her own blaster that was deflected by Vosa's lightsaber. Fett goes after Vosa, and after a long battle, Vosa gets force choked by abruptly arriving Darth Tyrannus who shares with Django that it was a test to see who would be worthy of being genetically cloned for an army. Fett agrees, but only if the first clone would be an unmodified version. Django collects the 5 million credits and carries a wounded Zam to his ship, where she says, can we split it 50-50? And he's like, hell no. <laughs> For a 2002 game, this game has pretty good graphics and visuals. I really enjoyed the cutscenes, and um, yeah, it was you know pretty good. I would get uh, you know the occasional texture error, uh, but you know nothing game breaking. The cutscenes would occasionally have T-posing enemies too, uh, which in the one like cutscene after uh, we made up with Zam was hilarious because there's just like five T-posing uh, inmates. Uh, just like walking around is hilarious. The story of this game adds to the overall story of Star Wars by showing a piece that has not really been shown in the movies or shows. The movies and especially the Clone Wars show have touched upon the clones' origin a few times over the years, but nothing in depth as this. It was an enjoyable story with a few cliche moments, but cliche works. Uh, like in the Clone Wars TV show, shows uh or talks about uh Sifo Dias and you know Count Dooku uh comes in to kind of like halt that investigation it kind of goes a little bit into all the clones and stuff like that but not like the Django Fett side which I thought was pretty neat I am glad to have played through and experienced this game the game encompassed many great themes and ideas and told a good story. Eventually, I will go back one day to 100% it and get the hardest achievements in the game. One of the achievements is to collect all the bounties in the game, and I think, like, for the missions, it maybe varies from, like, the shorter missions are usually, like, 5-ish, 5 to 10, the longer ones can be, like, 15 20, I think. So it's it's a lot of people and they can be anyone. So, um, anyways, thank you for tuning into the video and channel. Please like and subscribe. It helps to support me and get the video out there. It also means the world to me. Thank you again and have a wonderful day. Skilled Fawn out.